Hey guys, me Robert Chris Tomer here on this Sunday. Hey, we've got some snow coming in the forecast, but first, let's talk about what's happening now and what will lead up to that. This is the uh, the live view of the camera up there at Copper Mountain Ski Area in the uh, Central Mountains of Colorado near Vail, near Vail Pass, and it is socked in up there this morning. Rain and snow, although the snow level is pretty high. It's at about 13 and a half thousand feet, so you're going to have to be pretty high to get it out of this, but just a little bit of precip kind of traversing I-70 this morning. Um, so this is the view from Loveland Ski Area. I mean, a gorgeous sunrise right there through the clouds, but definitely some stormy clouds kind of uh, drifting over the top of the Continental Divide. Let me show you radar. So this is the western view, the big western view. And there are two disturbances. This is our next strong cold front. That's the one that's probably going to bring snow to parts of Wyoming, uh, parts of the High Uintas, and certainly Colorado between uh, Monday, Tuesday. And then there's a little disturbance right here. You can see this area of spin crossing parts of Idaho. So a couple of different features. Let me show you what it looks like in Colorado since I, I showed you those two cameras. And you can see just a little bit of action here. Tiny traversing I-70 from west to east um, this morning. Then you've got this. This is the cold front. This is our storm system up here in the Pacific Northwest. Heavy rain up here um, in the PNW, all the way up into parts of BC. Snow only at the very, very highest of elevations with this um, this morning. All right, let's talk about the, uh, the bullet points here um, this morning and the timeline for all of this. So Really what I'm watching is that storm system in the Pacific Northwest because it becomes this fast-moving cold front between this afternoon, Monday, and Tuesday across a lot of the Intermountain West. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Long's Peak in Colorado, which if you're not familiar is right there at Rocky Mountain National Park, so right on the front range, high peaks, continental divide area, tilts down to the east, 6 to 12 inches of snow between Monday and Tuesday. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Fall also starts on Monday, so perfect timing. Here, in fact, are the best odds of snow on the highest peaks for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and BC. Um, so it does include today in, in a number of areas, and you can see that 921 BC included. But it extends all the way out to 922, 923, depending on your location, like Colorado, uh, it'll brush the high Uintas of Utah, Wyoming. We'll get some snow in the Wind Rivers and then down into the Laramie Range. I'll show you the snow map here in a second. And then the next disturbance after that is further down the road um, in the forecast. Um, I want to show you what this is going to look like. Um, first of all, let me show you the uh, water vapor satellite imagery. Then I'll show you the forecast radar. So this is um, water vapor in the middle of the atmosphere. So where you see these uh, reds and these oranges, that's drier air. The action is in these whites and these blue colors right here. That's where you're going to see the precipitation. And so that's what we've got. There's that tiny little area of low pressure. And then there's the much bigger one right here with the cold front. That's the one that's going to run down on a northwest flow type pattern through the Intermountain West and drop that snow in parts of Wyoming, parts of Utah, and Colorado. All right, I want to show you how this plays out. So this is the forecast radar, as if you were looking at the radar in the future. Um, and I'm going to start this. We'll start this at lunchtime um, today on the clock. So Sunday, September 21st. And what you're looking at when you see these bands of colors, that's what the radar should show at these times. And the more intense the rain, it goes up to greens and yellows, and then eventually the oranges and reds would be even more intense, heavier amounts of precipitation. Okay, so again, we'll start this at lunchtime today. All right, here we are late today. There's midnight into Monday, September 22nd. What do you notice? Things are starting to gel here across Wyoming, Montana. That's the cold front running down through the inner mountain. A little bit of moisture here coming up on the subtropical branch as well. All right, here we go into there's early on Monday. There's lunchtime on Monday. A couple of things happening. So you still got your cold front, 
But now it's starting to move down through Wyoming and approach Colorado. You've got a little bit of that moisture coming in on the southern branch feeding into Colorado. And what we're going to see is an area of low pressure that will likely develop somewhere right in here. And that's going to track down through here and help to kind of wrap the precipitation back around the area of low pressure and bank it up. And we'll get some upslope flow across uh, parts of the mountains of Wyoming and Colorado. So again, that is uh, lunchtime on Monday. There's the afternoon evening on Monday, and notice what we've got. The precipitation right there, banked right up against the Continental Divide and the Front Range High Peaks of Colorado. Now, the freezing level, by the time we get into Monday afternoon, Monday night, Tuesday morning, could very well drop to 9,500 to 10,000 feet. Um, so that's that's going to be pretty interesting to watch as it drops that low. But certainly, the highest peaks are going to get caked in snow out of this thing. All right, there's midnight into Tuesday morning. There's Tuesday morning, and look what's happening. We're starting to see this area of low pressure develop and start to see the precipitation wrap back around the area of, li of low pressure. That's cyclonic curvature. All right, here we are, lunchtime. This is lunchtime on Tuesday. And look at the uh, the precipitation wrapping back around the area of low pressure. Northeast wind driving that precip up the uh, the continental divide of Colorado. So we're still getting snow up there, rain along the front range down into Denver and over the eastern plains. Um, here we are um, in the evening hours on Tuesday. Things start to wind down, and then it's much drier by the time we get into uh, Wednesday morning. So that's how the event plays out um, over the course of time. Let me show you how this is going to look in the middle of the atmosphere. So these are atmospheric pressure anomalies up at about 18,000 feet. So you're looking for areas of high or low pressure. This is on Monday, 922. Look what we've got. There's our storm system, an area of low pressure. You can see that with the blue colors representing areas of lower than normal pressures. There's our little subtropical remnant moisture, and some of that will feed into this area of low pressure. So again, that's Monday. All right, let's look ahead. Now, this is Tuesday, the 30th of the month. This is an AI model right here. Um, and it is looking at, um, same thing, atmospheric pressure anomalies. And this believes there's a pretty deep area of low pressure dip in the jet that moves into the West Coast. We'll see. That's on 930. Um, even further down the road, this is the 6th of October. This is also an AI model. And this believes a pretty deep area of low pressure dip in the jet will be in the Pacific Northwest in BC with a pretty significant area of high pressure right here where you see all these oranges and these reds. So we'll see if that plays out. Um, okay, here's the time height forecast. We'll just go through this quickly. This is for Cameron uh, Pass in Colorado. You know what? Um, let me let me switch let me switch that. Um, let me switch that out. I want to change that to, uh, let's go to Loveland Ski Area. All right, so this is the time height forecast for Loveland Ski Area right here. So we'll start, this is the current moment. Moving into the future, you read it in this direction, and I'm looking for the green. That's going to be your moisture, and you're looking at a slice through the atmosphere. So moisture starts to increase this afternoon, Monday afternoon, and then boom, you're really into it. Look at this deep plume of moisture at almost all atmospheric levels, all the way from the ridge lines to the high peaks, all the way up to jet stream level. That is on Monday night into Tuesday. And so that may very well be our most prime time for generating snow between Monday night and Tuesday night, Monday night and Tuesday night, somewhere right in there. And then it will dry out after we get through that period. So Monday into Tuesday is probably the prime time. That's Loveland Ski Area, but you can apply that to Long's Peak, the, the Indian Peaks, Rocky Mountain National, Cameron Pass, um, and beyond. And there will be some spillover um, as well to areas beyond, just west of the Continental Divide, like the 10 mile range um, up around Steamboat. You'll probably get some out of this, not as much, but you could still pick up a few inches of accumulation. Um, okay, now this is Berthoud Pass. And this, is, this has a pretty good acceleration of snow here on this event, Monday into Tuesday. Uh, four to five inches up there, in fact, over Berthoud Pass. This goes all the way out to October 5th. 
And then there's another little uh, gentle upglide of snow right here, late September and early October. Overall, the average or the mean on this bottle is about eight inches during that period. So, but you can see with these error bars, I mean, it's way up to a foot or 14 inches. Um, that would be the extreme case. Um, but, you know, the mean, the mean is much down here in the, it's much lower when you look at the, the weighting from all of the models. All right, here is the 10-day snow forecast. And notice where all of the heavy snow is, the brighter reds, right down here in Colorado, um, southern Wyoming. And then there's a bit up here in the Wind Rivers and the, the Bighorn as well. There could be up to six inches there. It's a bit up here in BC, although not a lot, and a tiny bit right there through parts of the High Sierra and probably two to five inches up here in the High Uintas. Let me zoom in on that map. That's a 10-day snow forecast. This forecast zoomed in across Wyoming, Utah, Colorado is only through this, this snowstorm. So through, through Wednesday uh, into early Thursday. Um, and notice what it does. Like I was saying, maybe up to six inches in the Wind Rivers, maybe up to six inches up here in the Bighorns, parts of potentially into Yellowstone, uh, maybe one to four here in the High Uintas, but clearly the big numbers are right here in parts of uh, Southern Wyoming and the front range high peaks banked right up against the Continental Divide of Colorado. Again, it's possible uh, right here around Long's Peak that we could pick up six to 12 inches. I mean, that's what you're looking at. When you see these sort of reds and magentas, you're looking at six inches plus in a lot of those areas. So very interesting. Um, we're getting a pretty good upslope flow right there in Colorado out of this. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Again, prime time for this is somewhere between Monday and Tuesday across a lot of Wyoming and into Colorado. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.